I had a dream and it was the office people and the, you know the TV show office, um, the US version and they were watching the office while they were at working in an office and they were like being very hush hush about it. It was kind of weird and something to do with this guy named Niga Higa, he's a YouTuber. He was being weird about something. I don't know what that is. Um, and then the foster father, um, he was sitting on my bed. Um, but like he was attempting to plan my murder or something. Like he actually was trying to kill me. And I don't know what the fuck that even means or why he wanted to kill me but that's what he was trying to do just to try to kill me and I'm just like what I changed my password fucked up. He was saying some awful stuff. I just remember him saying all these really bad stuff over messages and I was like, what the fuck? Oh, by the way, my roommate Solomon is getting weirder and weirder by the day and I don't know what the fuck he's even talking about now. Um... I know the cops are trying to arrest me, but for some reason, like, they think that... Like, I I don't know what's going on with Preston. I don't know where he went. Um, I don't know why they won't return my things or my dogs. I remember I was at this, like, location before, and some crazy person was trying to, like... Have sex with me by saying, I just want my family back. And I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. Honestly, I was assuming that he was trying to say that, like, I lost my family or, like, my family is, like, broken or something. And I'm like, maybe he got triggered. But I just, I wanted to be clear that, like, they were never normal. Like, from the moment they adopted me, which I'm starting to suspect that they actually kidnapped me when I was a kid. So these people were never normal. Ever. Like, at any point were they ever, like, sane, functional, and like, socially acceptable. So that wasn't... And I don't really care. Susan has been saying this. This is why I was a little suspicious that he said that. But Susan has been saying that, like, oh, that she's been implying that um, I'm the person who wants to um, get the family back together and save the family or save people's lives or whatever. And like, what are you talking about? She just gets, she goes through psychosis all the time. So I'm just like, what the hell is she on about now? crazy bitch right because I'm just like I don't care <laughs> if they like do that stuff if that makes sense like I never really considered them my family that's the thing like I did and then they did that and I'm like okay well I guess I can't consider you my family anymore right because it's not what families do to each other since it's a makeshift family not like a cult, but like a makeshift family. 
right? But then, like, the minute you don't do your contractual obligations, legally binding contractual obligations, then no, it's no longer considered that thing. Because they're not my legitimate family, and then they were like trying to like get me to marry them and have sex with them so they can keep my stuff and my money, and then they could get away with like scamming other people, using my name and stealing my identity and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's crazy. Everything they think about is absolutely insane, and their plans are absolutely insane. And then now I find that my dreams are telling me um, Sean has been trying to kill me. Yeah, apparently he just wants to kill me. Like, legitimately murder me or something. And I was like... But anyway, I'm tired. I'm so tired. Um, I don't want Solomon to feel- he told me his name was Solomon, but I actually don't know if it is. I don't want, want him to feel insecure about anything, but like, he's giving me weird vibes. Like, it feels weird. We're not really meshing. It just seems like he's just trying to get me to be emotionally attached to him, or like, um, take advantage of my emotional state. If that makes sense, I'm just like, I just, I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, I mean, I should make some room for myself here because, like, I needed some space to put my belongings. But that was it. Um, Like, I don't know, some people, look because they have delusional, like, they're going through psychosis. They thought that, like, we were friends and we were long-term lovers or, like, um, we were destined to be together. All that, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, yeah, I'm like, I don't, I feel like that's something Susan should have worried about years ago. The stuff about saving the family, making sure everything's okay and everyone's okay. Okay, that's, like, that would have been her problem right she was supposed to make sure that kind of stuff was again the fact is the fact that she didn't look after that stuff and the fact that i'm not gonna go back near them even if i needed something i mean i'd literally have to be forced to go and talk to them by other people in the neighborhood that's how bad it is and um I'm not going to be the one helping them or sort through their stuff for them or helping them organize anything. I'm not going to be the one looking after them when they get old. Like, it's not going to be me. They have other kids, two other kids that they cared about for that. So why would I care? I don't understand what it is that they're doing. A lot of people have implied that it was because I was homosexual. That's why they kicked me out. And I'm like, that's not, I'm not homosexual. But I think they're trying to, I think, honestly, they're actively repressing this memory and the fact that this is happening because they can't understand that, um, why would this person do this to their own kid for no reason, even if that kid is adopted? It's not like they haven't seen other parents who adopt and they haven't adopted themselves or they don't have family members who adopt. They say this doesn't make sense. And I'm like, you act like every person in the world do, does things with good intentions. And even though they haven't done anything yet, doesn't mean they're not going to do anything. Right. And anyway, um, yeah, she should have looked after that years ago. And so should have the rest of the family. I'm like, who else are you going to rely on?
I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of... I hope it's nothing to do with me. But in any case, she was supposed to make sure that, like, her family, as in, like, the aunts and uncles and, like, nieces and nephews and stuff, and cousins and stuff, like, I'm sure not my nieces and nephews, like, my cousins. My cousin had a kid, so I have a... I, all I know is that this called nephew, right? Or is that, like, a cousin, second cousin or something? I call that a nephew, but I don't know if that's called a nephew. Let me Google that. Uh, none of the foster siblings have a kid. No, I don't really have... I guess this is sec my second cousin, or like cousin once removed or something. Yeah, I, apparently it's like it's called um, my first cousin once removed. I don't think that's what that is. I think it's, um... I call that person, I would call that person my nephew and niece, but, um, I don't know. Um, but, like, maybe nephew once removed, or something, or second cousin. I think that's what most people call it, their second cousins. I thought, honestly, it's supposed to be, um, your cousin's cousin is your second cousin. And your cousin first removed is apparently your cousin's kid. Yeah, but I, anyway, regardless, um, yeah, that was kind of her job, it wasn't my job. And then the whole thing with Preston where this weird animal services are being trying to sell him because they think he's worth a lot of money and it's like, um, they don't understand that it's not their dog, which is because they think that they're very wealthy people. How do I say this? Like, they're, they're insane. Yeah. I don't really care what it is that people have to say, and I don't really care about all that kind of stuff. Like, I just, I need them to know that. Because they just keep expecting me to care about them and reciprocate their feelings, where I just don't understand what it is that they're feeling. I feel weird about um, my roommate. Like, I don't really, not that I don't trust him or anything, but, like, I just, oh, is this, it's not, like, anything like that, it's just, I don't personally care about what he's trying to say. I don't really know why he's saying those things. I feel like he's trying to be the boss of me by, like, trying to get me to, like, do you know what I mean? But I don't, like, honestly, not that, like, I just, I don't know if he's trying to help me or hurt me. That's the thing. It just seems like he just wants me to, like, have emotions and feelings for him or whatever. And he's been implying that I've been behaving in a way that makes him feel stuff like that. And I'm like, I haven't done that at all. And he's been calling me a whore. And I'm like, it's just weird that he was doing that. I'm not a whore or anything like a whore at all, so this is, th that's the thing that's kind of raising some alarm bells kind of thing. Um, I wanted to transition this video into talking about transgender people. So everybody assumes a transgender person has had transgender surgery. That's not true. For a person to be identified as transgender, 
Um, and also, I'm going to go off the top of my head about the LGBTQA plus community. I think that's what they're called now in general. Um, for transgender people, uh, it's like you, there's there's these differences between men and women and what men do and what women do, which makes somebody very... I'm talking outside of the expected masculine feminine traits, like, oh, that's girly, oh, that's boyish, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm talking about a transgender person is exactly like the opposite gender, except that person is, like, biologically born the same gender, if that makes sense. Like, you know how guys communicate and how men like things and men do things like because of they socialize differently, men and women. Um, they, a, a transgender woman would be a person who's physically a man, but socially and perceptually and um, biologically everything's a man, but like the way they talk, the things that they like, the way they like going about doing things is a woman that's what women do but they are like that they know they're exactly like women in that way except they are a man so that's called transgender regardless of their self-identifier or if they know about it or not so a lot of people are trying to call me a transgender i'm not a transgender person okay so a transgender person is usually socially unacceptable because of the way they behave because it's not for it's not socially acceptable for men to behave as a woman they're not very well liked by other men and um it's hard to get along with them because they get very upset and they get very insulted and offended when they become when they are expected to behave as a man and get treated as a man they expect other people to kind of be, respond the way they would respond to a woman but that's nothing to do with like um they just up and decided that they this has been a consistent behavior pattern since they were children so that's the transgender part um it means self-identifying as in like regardless of whatever they identify as um they are biologically a male or a man um, but behavior wise and um, like talking about general trends and everything, all that kind of stuff. So like they have preferences of a woman and they talk and act and think exactly like a woman. And they respond as if a woman would, but they're not doing it as an act. That's just kind of how they naturally are. And it's something that makes people upset because it's weird if that makes sense like that's, that's called a transgender person they don't have to go through with the transgender surgery in order to be identifying or I'd be self-identify as a woman so if that person if the man chose to say oh I personally identify as a woman I prefer to be called a woman and like treat as blah 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 it sounds a little sarcastic. Some of them are sarcastic because not everybody who's like that is going to identify as a woman where it's that part it's important to distinguish because they may not be okay with that. If they're not okay with that kind of stuff, it's called sexual harassment. So because they identify as um, if that person is still a man and he like it's hard to get along with that person if other men like, they don't like guys like that, right? It's weird for them to talk to somebody that's not normal. Again, they're, they, some of them identify as women, some of them don't. But that's what transgender is. It's likewise with women. If a woman is um, biologically female, but she responds and talks exactly like a man, and I'm not talking about tomboys, um, now I'm talking about girls who are into gaming or g into things that typically is predominantly a male-dominated activity or a career, like nothing like that. And we're not talking about daddy issues or anything where she's trying to like prove something to somebody for some misplaced whatever's. Um, I'm 
legitimately talking about a woman who is like a man. So, like, she's a man, but physically she's a woman. That's also called transgender. They don't all have the surgery to go through with it to make themselves a physically appear a different gender. Also, that surgery is very painful and they actually end up being on painkillers and they can't be prescribed painkillers for too long, so some of them actually end up on heroin. Which I suspect some drug addicts to take it too far and use that as an excuse to continue to do heroin because it hurts to physically go through with it. It's a painkiller. Heroin and ketamine and other opiates are painkillers. Um, so that's transgender for ya. <laughs> Um, I'm sure somebody has come across somebody who is transgender. In America, it's not actually that uncommon to meet somebody who's like that. A lot of people like to hide in the closet, so to speak, where they want, they want to, they have some skeletons in the closet, that's what that means. In the closet, skeletons in the closet is referring to, like, past behaviors or things that they've done in their life that's so evident. But it's not something that they want to, like, talk about so freely, even though it's not... As people might not actually be so concerned about that kind of stuff. That's what scales in his closet means. Um, again, like... Um, do... It's... Is it a parent since people are children? Like, I'm talking about, like, still, like, within the 8 to 12-year-old range. That's still a child. Okay. <laughs> I know they're not infants and toddlers anymore, and they're not babies, but that's still a child. That's called a child. <laughs> 8 to 12 year olds called child. 13 to 19 is called a teen. They're still under the category of children or youth. And then from 20 and up, they are considered young adults until they get into full adulthood, which is around a mid to late 20s. So that's when people fully mature, physically and socially, right? Um, so what is it that, like, why do people not like transgender? I don't know if you've ever talked to somebody who's transgender, but they're very weird to be around. People call them trannies with the implication that they went through surgery to have the genitals look like that and that are, like, on a lot of hormones. Not always it's true, um, but, like, they make, they make me personally uncomfortable. Like, I don't really like talking to people who are transgender. Because, like, I like being a woman, and I like being womanly, and talking to, like, a woman who's, like, a man is just kind of weird. Especially since, like, it feels like she's trying to, like, come on to me. Or, like, I feel like she's trying to imply that I'm coming on to her. Like, it just feels like there's some sort of sexual attraction coming from the other person. Which could be possible, like I said, their their orientation is towards women, typically, because the, they're like a man. But not all transgender people are homosexual. So that's another thing. But anyway, it's just, it's kind of weird. It's like, um, I don't know how else to explain it. It's kind of like, I feel like I'm at a funeral, and then there's a person who's dressed in, like, their prom outfit... And, like, talking about, like, the party that they're gonna go to after the funeral, like, in the middle of the service. Like, if that makes sense, this is, it's, that's how I feel when people, when I meet people who are transgender. It just makes me feel really uncomfortable, and it looks inappropriate. Like, completely looks inappropriate. It's not okay for them to do that kind of stuff. Um, but it's not, like... Some people think that they're mentally ill. Some people think that there's something wrong with them or whatever. No, you can't tell when they're kids because these gender expressions actually start between the ages of 8 to 12. Some kids earlier, some kids later. So that's when you can see the outright differences between gender. Um, aggression, social aggression, as in like um, people who are angry or don't like a person in their social group, how they express that is completely gender divided. So men, outright fight, they'll get into a brawl. 
women, they will do socially, like, they are the ones spreading rumors, they're the ones excluding other people, they're the ones, like, um, trying to pick nasty fights behind people's back, right? Like, they're, they're verbally aggressive, not physically aggressive, whereas men are physically aggressive, but after that beating up part is done, they're not going to talk about it again. And um, with women, like, they'll just ostracize a person or the woman that they don't like. So it's like having no friends versus you get your ass beat. See, that's where the thing is, where men don't actually like doing that kind of stuff, like the ostracizing. And they prefer if everybody got along versus women where they're like, please... If you're not gonna do that, then we can't be friends with you. Get out. Leave. <laughs> but that's man and woman for you. Again, if there's a woman and she'd rather beat the shit out of someone instead of ostracizing her and using her words and her mannerisms to indicate her dislike towards somebody in order to get them to correct their behavior and getting people that she knows involved or people who would support her involved in that kind of stuff, right? That's what women do, okay? If a man does this, it means he's transgender when he's angry. If he's socially aggressive that way, it means he's transgender. If a woman is socially aggressive in a way that she goes and picks fights with people, I'm not talking about self-defense. Self-defense classes are great for everyone. I think everyone should learn self-defense in some way. And I'm talking about, like, boxing or, um, I don't know, like, Krav Maga or Taekwondo or, like, um, Jiu-Jitsu, that kind of stuff. Wrestling, that's called self-defense. Although wrestling is more towards a sport than it is self-defense. So that kind of stuff, like, when somebody's trying to assault you, or, like, it's whatever reason, like, and you're like, oh my god. Because people don't stop fighting each other just because they're of different genders, if that makes sense. Um, so that's what transgender is. I feel like a lot of people don't understand this because they, like, want to force the other person to behave in a socially acceptable way for that person, which is given their age and sex and um, what culture they're born in and, and or what culture that they're supposed to be behaving as. Um, I just want to clarify, they're not actually doing that intentionally. I mean, sometimes you can tell people are like copying it or mocking it, but that's I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that they're naturally innately just behaving that way because they are considered this category called transgender. And this is where the doctors come in and how to supplement that kind of stuff by saying you can actually go through with a surgical procedure to make yourself appear like this. Appear like a man versus woman or something. And then there's a whole bit of gender dysphoria where a person as they get older, they see some sort of they have a cognitive dissonance between the way they, that they behave, which is acceptable for a man or a woman, and then the way, like, which is what they can see with how other men and women behave and how they behave. So with people who have gender dysphoria, as they said the only way to treat it is if they go through transgender surgery. Do they actually have... Have it, has it prevented any of them from being suicidal or whatever? Um, according to reports, a person who has gender dysphoria, typically they have depression and eating disorders on top of that, who um, undergoes gender transition surgery end up with most of them are cured of depression and all that kind of stuff. The only cure for that kind of stuff is to go through the gen gender transition surgery. For those people who have been living their entire lives, in a certain way, and I think it's more of a signifier for other people to say that, hey, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I, I, I know I'm biologically, uh, let's say I'm biologically female, but I'm actually like a dude, completely, so I'm gonna try to change my appearance to let you know that, like, um, you should treat me like I'm, like, see me as a man, because that's how I behave and respond. 
not all of them, like I said, are homosexual. <laughs> I mean, it's harder to be socially acceptable that way, and it's harder for them to even find partners or people willing to accept them into their social group. Most of the time, they are ostracized. Most of the time, they face a lot of backlash. Most of the time, um, they're not very, like, well-liked in the community. They don't have a lot of friends. They don't, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of stuff. Um, you understand why? Because a lot of times, they're just completely inappropriate. And it's because of the fact that they don't really uh, abide by the social norms due to the fact that they're trans they are transgender. I'm not saying they're, it's an exception for them, but I'm saying because that's just how they are born, if that makes sense. They're born in that way, right? Like, that's how their brain is wired, and that's kind of how the hormones are working, and that's kind of how they're responding naturally. It's not like because they're trying to train themselves to be something they're not. In any case, um, Homosexuality is a completely different subject where a person is sexually attracted to somebody of the same gender and apparently there's this bisexuality thing where a person is attracted to people with either gender. Um, I don't think that's true. I don't believe in that stuff. There was a guy who wrote me who told me he was bisexual and I was like, I think you're a faggot, and I think that's what other guys have been telling you, and you're like, you maybe you find some aspects of it, like, I don't know what the fuck he was trying to say, but maybe he was trying to tell me that he's a faggot, but I'm like, I don't disagree anymore after what you did, I mean, prior to that point, I didn't even know you very well, but then afterwards, what you did, I'm like, okay, <laughs> definitely agree with that statement but um homosexuality is when a person is sexually attracted to another person of the same gender i don't know if that's true this has never been discussed in any of my philosophy courses or my psychology courses so i don't know if this is a valid and legitimate thing does that make sense? Like, I don't know if people are legitimately homosexual. Because, like, sexuality and sexual orientation, it presents itself in different ways. So sexual orientation is kind of like, what kind of gets you going sexually? What makes you sexually aroused? That's called sexual orientation. And then the whole sexuality part, which is like, um... How do you identify yourself, sexually speaking? Right? Um, th I think that's for older people who really get into that kind of stuff. Like, I don't think it's for younger people who are starting to figure out, like, their place in life and, like, what the world is like and, like, figure out, like, all their finances and, like, their people that they should be friends with and all that kind of stuff. Like, I, some people get into it when they're younger, too. So, like, yeah, I've people have told me that, like, they have done, like, weird sexual stuff since they were children. And I was like, yeah, that's weird. To me, that never really occurred to me. Although, I did get into, like, sexual stuff a little when I was younger. But I found out, like, my sexual orientation is towards gory stuff. If that makes sense, it's, like, gore. So, it's, like, um... Gore is illegal, actually. It's, like, the only form of pornography that's illegal. Like, there's no way in any country to make gore legal. Gore being, like, um... It's, like, a lot of, like, blood and guts spilled and blah. And it gets really, like, there's so many blood everywhere and there's weapons and people are dying. That's called gore. That's what that is. Okay. <sighs> Some people like, you know, trashy romance novels. Some people like, um, the straight up ex sexually explicit pornography content. You know, the, like the, that kind of stuff gets them going. 
like some people like fantasy scenes of like sexual assault or like um i don't know like role playing that kind of stuff like that's called sexual orientation i don't know why they only use it in the homosexual slang way but that's what that is that's sexual orientation what kind of stuff are you sexually like how do you sexually arouse yourself or how can somebody else sexually arouse you and get you to like you know do those things like how how do i let a man's penis inside of me if i don't find it sexually appealing you know that kind of stuff but anyway um what is homosexuality is one supposedly a man likes another man in a sexual way now i have had other guys explain to me that's not what that is that's just called rape and he also mentioned that like some you can see some guys get sexually aggressive and even though there's not really a woman around it doesn't mean that they want to do that to a man Sometimes they just sexually assault other women. A sexually assault woman. <laughs> Sometimes, um, what they end up doing is, um, like getting away from that scene of the crime. <laughs> As in, they're not homosexual, but they, um, become aroused like i think it just triggers everything their fight or flight response and sometimes it causes their dick to be i don't know why i don't know again like i said people have incorrect responses all the time so i'm not super surprised but again with the porn addiction and the watching porn and all that it has something to do with that but anyway that's what homosexuality is um i don't know and you homosexuals. I think there's very effeminate, effeminate guys. And like they're called Nancy's back in the day. Not anymore. Really, really, really long time ago. They, they used to call those guys Nancy's and fags. And um, there's like, ah, oh, jeez. I don't even notice. Okay, so like there's like <sighs> these guys that like they're like they're very girly like they're very feminine for like they're not very masculine they're somewhat feminine they're not transgender and like people assume that they're homosexual because they're not like this idea of like masculinity right like you're not like a manly man like opinion of what men should be like or like my the ideal image of a man <laughs> that kind of stuff um what actually ended up happening was that like um some guy i think he was trying to explain it saying like oh like um some guys and some women are sexually attracted to people of their own gender and i'm like that's not normal and they're like it's not and they don't actually like I think that's what he was trying to say, which is, like, they don't get to pick and choose who they're sexually attracted to, unfortunately, but it's always somebody of their own gender. And most of the time, they're straight. And I was like, isn't that just called sexual harassment? And he says, yeah, but that's how they feel towards another person. If they felt like that towards a single person of the opposite gender, I'm like, that's still sexual harassment, you know that? And then he's like, yeah, but that's, like, what that is, except they actually respond that way as in they go out there and try to convince that person to have sex with them whereas somebody who is not homosexual would just kind of keep it to themselves and i'm like okay weird guy but yeah um i don't actually believe men are homosexual every self-proclaimed homosexual man i've mind i was like that is not like that's not gay i mean not gay gay but i'm like i don't know how to explain this like i thought you were gay how come you want to have sex with me and then like i thought, figured out some of them were just being sarcastic so they're just outright lying about their sexuality and they're like i guess that's how they're explaining it like but um 
Anyway, a lot of them are criminals, by the way, guys who do that kind of stuff. Um, but do I personally feel bad about people who are transgender, etc., etc.? I actually don't care. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, I personally feel like it's inappropriate because I'm very, like, these are my personal standards and morals, but a lot of people don't have that. <laughs> Some of them are hypocritical, they, and I can see that they get along with some of the people that, um, if they met them and, like, they actually like, kept an open mind or whatever, and, like, start to, like, you know, actually want to have friends and stuff, like, they get along fine, um, oh, also, like, the drag queens and stuff, like, guys who, um, dress up as women and wear a lot of makeup and then they, like, perform on stage and stuff, they're not actually all homosexual or transgender, some of them are just mean, and they're, like, making fun of women that way. It's slightly misogynistic what they're doing, but anyway, I mean, that's like another topic for another day. Misogyny means, like, anti-women. <laughs> so, like, it's hatred towards all women. So they kind of hate women. <laughs> um, no, they're not homosexual, they're not transgender, but they're straight guys, and they typically hate on other women. They, their relationship with women tend to be... Get, get, tend to be abusive, and so do all homosexual relationships, unfortunately. Um, because it's not natural, and you're not going to ever mesh together the way you think is going to be in your head. I know you're fantasizing about that kind of stuff, but in reality, it's not like that. Because, like, a man and a woman are supposed to mesh together, that's what that's for. But a man and a man, they can't mesh together. It's like, how do I bake a cake with no dry ingredients? Like, all I have are wet ingredients. I got the milks, and then the syrups, and then the egg yolks, and the eggs. But I got no f powder stuff, like the flours, and the yeast, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, how am I supposed to make a cake if all I have is two sets of wet ingredients? You can't. But, like, um, I think some of them do realize this, but I actually personally never met an actual homosexual, like, strictly only had sex with somebody from the same gender, consensual, willing, and is constantly discriminated against because they are homosexual. The same extent where the racial ex discrimination exists and sexism exists. That I've never personally met, but anyway, that's the LGBTQ community, A plus or whatever. It's like they put it under the same umbrella category as like it's a very broad spectrum, right? And these are the people who don't fit in, and also I'm, it includes people with chromosomal abnormalities. If people didn't know about those, so like people are born with a sex chromosome, an X, Y chromosome, right? If that person is a boy, <laughs> XX chromosome, if that person is a female, right? The Y chromosome bit they actually get from their dads. And then the X, like, so one, the egg, right, always from your mom, she'll always give you an X chromosome. And then the other part is from your dad, so it's either an X or an Y. So your the sperm carries either an X sex chromosome or the Y sex chromosome, and that determines if it's gonna be a boy or girl. The sperm. A lot of people don't know this. <laughs> so that's the sperm. And they're like, oh, the sperm has the X chromosome. So it's just your dad who, like, you know, there's always like this um old wives tale where they're like um it's the woman who gets to decide oh, she couldn't bear me any sons or something it's like no it's your fault you idiot technically the sperm's the one that's responsible for that gender expression the sex of the baby it depends on the sperm not the mom's egg the dad's sperm so uh, that's what that is um chromosomal abnormalities Klinefelter syndrome jacob something syndrome it's like they have, are born with an extra chromosome and it can lead to mental retardation, not always. Um, sometimes they have like YY chromosome, sometimes it's like XXY chromosome, sometimes they're missing a chromosome so it's just one X chromosome. 
it's just um it, that's called a hereditary gene defect right and that causes that person to express their gender differently right their hormones are going to be in not in balance there's something wrong with that person just internally speaking so they just end up like not being within the socially accepted range due to their biological functions and that's also a person who's part of the lgbtq a plus community um so lgbtq a plus community it consists of all i'm gonna be honest i've never met somebody who is working class who's from lgbtq a community a plus community they're usually in the poor class. Some of them do manage to get into working class, but like I said, they're constantly fa- facing discrimination. Um, with the that kind of stuff. Um, why do people not understand like that kind of stuff? Um, they never really come across it that much. Like again, I said, like if you live in a really poor, lower income neighborhood, you'll see people like that everywhere. But like, um. They're usually sometimes they work in the media, um, like for like they sing or they are acting or anything like that, that kind of stuff. Um, most of them are sex workers. I'm not gonna lie. Why do they work in the sex work job? Um, because they're kind of forced to. Like I said, the like women. You know, a lot of women from different types of ethnic or, um, what's it called um financial backgrounds. They're also forced into working certain jobs that. They shouldn't have to work because due to discrimination. I mean, that level of discrimination exists on all levels and all fields. It's kind of like how people weed people out, right? But um, with that said, um, LGBTQA community is that um, including the homosexuals, including the bisexuals, including the transgenders. Um, uh, the people who have like all these chromosomal abnormalities that cause them to express them, ex- to express their gender and socialize differently, and are actually biologically different. Um, why? Like you may ask, why do are they separate category from other people? I have to be honest, they're like anyone else. They're not gonna like everyone from that category just because you belong in that group, like demographically speaking but um all i've noticed was that just because homosexuals tend to be very either anti-woman or anti-man so i think it's like uh, misogynist and androgynist or something so like they don't really actually like other transgender people and transgender people, they don't really want to out themselves, so they don't even end up going and trying to meet people from that group of people who are like them. Um, with people who have like genetic or inherited disorders, um, just because they're a little odd, something due to something that they had no control over, doesn't mean that they want to be around people who they perceive as having control over their behaviors. So, like I said, there's a lot of like. I mean, they do tend to, like, kind of congregate in the same areas just because of the fact that um, they're less likely to be harassed or kicked out or thrown out. Now, what I was experiencing was that people were treating me as such, even though I didn't do anything like that. And I think they were trying to convince me that I just didn't think I didn't do anything when I actually did, and that's why we're saying this, and I'm like, that makes no sense, you're being abusive. That's what that is like you just you be a crazy person <laughs> i don't know why so many people went crazy but i don't understand where your point is like you're saying these things and it's absolute garbage and it makes no sense for you to say them and i'm really surprised somebody even hired you to work when you can't understand how society functions That's what I was really concerned about. I was like, that's not how things work. I just, I don't understand. (laughs) Do you really think it's going to be aiding you in your success to life or something? I don't know. Regardless, um, 
is it hard to get along with people from that community? Um, some drag queens are part of it, some drag queens aren't. But is it hard to get a, get like involved in that community? Is it hard to be an ally? Um, that's what the A says for ally. Um, which is you're supporting them and their lifestyle through um, either like um, making sure that they can still do those things or um, support them financially by supporting their local businesses that are owned by or run by people who are from that community. Um, do I care? Be particularly, I don't, I don't really care what two consenting adults do with each other, or to each other. <laughs> I mean, by all means, um, but is, are some of them inappropriate? Yeah, do they do anything about it? Absolutely not. The only thing that they do is say that they're part of the LGBTQA and make sure that there's somewhere that they can still hang out in. But that's it. They don't actively do something to prevent or, like compensate for the damage is done by people that are like that because again they're like we're not actually their friends but we are trying to include them in this discriminatory category that people are forcing us to be in because they were demographically the same so they think all of us are the same that we all come from the same background and we all talk the same and we all have the same idea about sex and we all went through the same experience in life which is a completely untrue right and, like, I just, I want to be very clear on this. Um, they're normal people to a large extent. It may make some other people uncomfortable if they've never met people like that before. Um, are they all crazy, drug addicted, sodomizing um, weirdos? Some of them are. Well, not all of them, but the ones that are are typically the more attractive ones. Where you might be fooled into thinking, oh my god, that guy's over there is so cute. And then next thing you know, you're like, what? <sighs> How the hell did I end up binge drinking for three nights straight and like in a motel in like a different state? Like, that's kind of. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Um, are they harassed by the police? They never actually talk about it, but yeah, they are. They're frequently contacted by the police. They have police around them all the time because that people people from that kind of demographic are very well known for sexually assaulting other people. Sexually harassing other people and sexually assaulting other people. That's kind of... It's, it's not ramp it is kind of rampant in that community it, they don't condone it and they said they can't actually stop other people from doing that kind of stuff and some of them they do report it but they said like they, honestly like they experience backlash because of what other people in that demographic is doing but what other people from that kind of similar situation do about that is that they do actually look after each other and take care of each other the poor class or like from a less affluential background it's not like they just leave people out to try and out in the dirt and out to die and stuff like that people who do that are typically very poor very broke people okay they don't like they don't have any money to help themselves and they're always constantly leeching off other people that's what they're like the police in particular um they actually don't do things to compensate. Like again, they kind of are against this. Is what I've noticed: the whole grouping into grouping them into one demographic. But there's not enough of them to have it. Like it would be a case study, not really much a thing. And they do follow similar trends demographically speaking. But in any case, um, excuse me. They um. They don't actually, like, they're not criminals. Like, criminals are different category. And I read some crackheads talk, talking shit about criminals because they like to help each other. But they do end up helping other people out, even if they're criminals. And he called them all like faggots because they helped out a single mom who was financially struggling and was on the streets and stuff like that. And they, um... 
or to do something nice for her or something like that and he's like yeah the gay the guys are gang 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 again that's a broke person they don't have any money <laughs> so that's kind of why a lot of i've noticed a lot of this like discomfort and unhappiness and this complaining from a person comes because of the fact that they're not they're incapable of reaching a higher financial state which is odd i mean it does have something to do with how well their life is going and their resources to be fair they are actively being denied their resources due to something that they can't control and that's how they're responding which is inappropriate which is why they can't get there but anyway um yeah are they like they don't actually go out of their way to like you know, they won't personally knock on your door and be like, well, whatever, if you've done something wrong and you're LGBTQ or whatever. Um, there was a guy who did make a video about, like, please don't kick out your or disown your kids just because your kid's homosexual. But I don't think anyone actually does that. I've never met a homosexual person who's about to disowned or kicked out because they're homosexual. I've met transgender kids who go through that a lot. Um, where their parents like outright reject them when they start behaving that way. Some of the really supportive ones, they they kind of like they're force fed hormones and they actually like make the sure that that person goes to transgender surgery, regardless of whether or not they want to or need to go through it. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're. Why, why are they important members of society? Because they can still work and they provide entertainment for some people and they're still the, a person at the end of the day regardless of whatever these identifying descriptions that you put labels on to describe them as and yeah, there are behaviors associated with it but not everyone's like that and that's important for you to recognize um, a person for you to recognize um, are they okay to like talk to and like get to know and are they gonna hurt me blah, blah, blah. they're like with anyone from any group okay they're not most likely going to do those things but yet they have there's a higher crime rate associated with the lgbtq but the difference is that they don't it's not considered a crime what they're doing because that's not what they're trying to do whereas with crime with criminals put them in a separate category their intention is to commit that crime it may not seem like it it might not even look like that it might not even sound like that and sometimes you can't even tell until the deed is done but with criminals their intention is to commit a crime and the crime is always going to hurt somebody it, and there's never no such thing as a victimless crime so that's always going to be the case with um criminals their intention is never to just kind of i mean sometimes they do things to help people out such as the case with the woman who was a single mom and was financially struggling so they they thought they could help out and do something good in the community that way but with um lgbtq people they wouldn't do that and they know it's it's sometimes it's because they don't want to be involved either and neither does anyone else and they're just like everyone else that way sometimes it's because um when they don't want to be they don't want another child in a vulnerable state especially with the mom to be involved in that community because it's not i guess it's not really the most safest thing to do i mean it's a lot of explicit stuff that they're saying and doing i don't know if they know that it's explicit to be honest because that's just how they are that's just how they are right it's not like they're trying to be that way this is how they are and they're just fully what they are but yeah i hear some people have tried to mention to me that um unlike in america in europe there's a lot of people who are homophobic and um, um, in Korea, not so much, but again, you'll get some weird looks from neighbors and you'll have a hard time making friends. But I feel like that's with everyone in any sort of like new area. So 
I don't know if it's discriminatory. Like, honestly, you won't be able to tell anyway. And they're not discriminating against you because of those things. Like, they're actually assessing you as a person. So what kind of person are you? And if we don't have a place for you, then we can't really do much with you, can we?